Welcome back. Hope you made a plate. If you didn't, shame on you. Go and make a plate. Do your homework. Come on. You can't just leave the donut sitting on a countertop. Um, mine's really, obviously, the uh, the most simplest of all plates. It's uh, just a circle that's been inset and then pulled down very slightly. And then the only other thing is the material. It's the default material, but then the roughness is set to zero so that it is uh, reflecting like a plate should. Um, looks like a plate. And uh, the only other thing I did was I uh, parented my donuts to the plate as well so that when you uh, move the plate, the donut goes with it, which you might wanna do. Anyway, in this part, we're gonna make the countertop look like a countertop. So gotta give it a texture. And uh, why not go to the best textures in the world, which is polygon.com. Uh, I might be biased since it's my own website, uh, I might be overwhelmingly biased, some might say, but, uh, you know, make your own call. Uh, so uh, we're going to use one of these textures, um, and it just so happens we've got some free ones. So if you go to the Refine by Free, then you should see three textures, and uh, this is the one that I would suggest. You can choose any one you want. If you want to switch it up, go for it, but this is the one that I would, uh, I would suggest. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, when it comes to the size, the resolution, uh, you would think bigger would be better. Sometimes it is, but it also uses up more RAM. Uh, so uh, 2K, I think should be enough. Like it just depends on like how much space in regards to the resolution of the screen. Uh, but 2K, I think will be, uh, will be fine. Then for the maps, um, this is, you know, somewhere down the road at Polygon, we'll probably release this as an update. But like for something like Marble, you don't need any other map other than the diffuse, right? because like there's no bump to Marvel. I mean, there might be a very tiny, tiny, tiny slight amount. Um, but there's no like gloss value. There's no like reflection value. It's all just like a flat thing. So really the diffuse map is all you need. So go ahead and hit download once you've got that. So once you've uh, downloaded a polygon texture, you'll get a zip file, unzip that zip file, and then Da, 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 da. Uh, you, you, inside it, you should see uh, two folders, like a previews one, which just has like the thumbnails. Um, and then you've got regular. And inside that, you'll have the resolution and there would be the actual texture. Okay, so what I wanna do is go to my shading tab with the table here selected, go to shading. And then if you haven't got a material on your plane already, give it a new material. And we could even give it a name like countertop. Then, to add this texture in here, all I'm gonna do is take that, and actually, just before I do it, I'm gonna use 3K instead, just so it's slightly more resolution than one, because I think one will be a little bit too low res. And I'm just gonna drag that over to Blender, which is something that a lot of people don't know you can actually do. But yeah, you can drag into Blender and it'll create an image node when you drop it into the uh, node, uh, node editor there. And then, uh, the only thing I want to drive, like this is, I, I just want it to drive the color of my material. So I'm going to take the color output of that and then put that into the base color input. And then when I do that, and you can actually switch to look dev mode, which will do it even faster than if it was cycles, um, you would see this. And that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Then the other thing I want to change for this material is the roughness amount, okay? Because marble, as it turns out, is pretty much as sharp as a mirror. Um, in fact, I took this reference photo. I was at a hotel in Seoul and I was like, hey, Marvel. So I went up and I was taking a lot of photos, an unnecessary amount of photos. And then like some old man was like walking through and he's like, hmm, what are you up to? And I was like, I'm a 3D artist. I'm doing it for reference photos. And he was like, all right, cool. <laughs> Just kept walking. And I was like, yep, it's exactly how I expected that conversation to go. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, point is, it's, it's, it's a pretty sharp reflection. So um, anyway, if we look at it in cycles view mode up there, um, then this is how it looks. And that's, that's marble, right? Now, if you want to change the scale of your marble, which uh, you may or may not want to do, depending on what you've got, um, you could change the, the size of the countertop because uh, what's my size now? It's one by one meter. Uh, but if you look at it from like the camera view, you can see that you could scale this in even further if you wanted to, but let's say you don't wanna do that. Uh, you can change the scale of the material that's being applied to it from a material shader level. And you can do that by hitting Control T with the image node selected, Control T, assuming you've got the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, which you should still have because we've been using it throughout this whole thing. Um, it'll just add in these two nodes very quickly. And the one thing we're looking for down here is scale. 
And uh, if you click and drag down, it'll actually select all the values underneath it, which is something that I've discovered for Blender um, embarrassingly late. It's been there for the whole time and I've been typing it in manually each time. But anyway, I'm gonna type in two. And when you do that, it's you can see it's scaled it. So it's now like tiling it, like it's, it's putting it there, 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 and there. So it's like it's scaling it. Uh, it's like twice the texture in the same space. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, um, and if you wanna have a different part of the material, you could like move the plane a little bit since we've got room on both sides of it to something like that. And um, yeah, cool. And just whilst you're playing around with that, I'll just show you as well. This is something that I discovered pretty late in my uh, CG career. Um, and that's the, like, what usually separates the best artwork from like average artwork is just honestly trying out a number of ideas. And one of those things you can do is something like materials, right? So what I like to do is I just download a bunch of textures from Polygon even, um, and then I unzip them and then I just go through and I just add them in one by one like this. And I take that image node and I drop it in here and I go, how does that look with like a quartz kind of thing? And I take that scale and I apply that and I go, yeah, that looks okay, but uh, I prefer this one or another one or whatever, right? So anyway, these textures are obviously from the premium side of Polygon, but uh, I'm just showing it as an example of, uh, of uh, what, what is this number four is what I'm using? Yeah, of like what you can do. And honestly, like I, I'm, I'm not just saying it because I own Polygon, but like the, this is like one of the ways that you, you can really improve your materials. In fact, it's like, I, I've noticed it. Like if you watch any making of video of like any artist, you'll see that they just throw a bunch of ideas. That's what kit bashing is. It's like throwing ideas into things and trying it out rapidly. So anyway, it's something that you could do if you were so inclined. So cool, that's our marble, looks okay. The only other thing that I would change with this marble is the uh, subsurf, because believe it or not, marble has subsurf. And it kind of like the light doesn't just hit it and bounce off at it, like it kind of enters into it. Looks almost like milky in a way, like kind of like a yellow tint to it. So I'm gonna add in a subsurf value of 0.1 and it'll see, it'll look milky, but also a little bit red. And that's because the radius values for some reason by default are set for skin, I guess, because maybe that's the default use. But anyway, in our case, I want them to be uh, 0.1, all of them 0.1. Um, 0.1, is that enough? Maybe 0.18. Yeah, something like that. And then I'll make the color a little bit, just slightly yellowy, just something like that. And uh, that looks a little bit closer to marble, not not too shabby. Cool, now, uh, yeah, cool. I Just for a minute there, I thought I wasn't recording. That would be a bummer. Now let's create the brick wall behind it. So um, yeah, let's just duplicate this plane here. So I'm gonna go, uh, let's go layout mode. So we've got a bit bigger. I'm gonna hit Shift D on that plane there. And by the way, I've turned off the screen keys tool because for some reason there's a bug in it where when you drag in nodes, it just like crashes it. So anyway, um, you won't see what I'm pressing, but Shift D and then I just moved it along the X axis by just hitting the middle mouse button. So move it, uh, middle mouse. And uh, then I wanted to flip it by 90 degrees. So R and then I'm gonna rotate it along the uh, that green axis there, so that's Y. So I just hit Y and then holding down control, you can see the top left-hand corner, I'm making that minus 90 degrees, okay? Um, now, importantly, you want to check to make sure that you have rotated it the correct way. So up here, we're gonna turn on face orientation. Very important that the blue side is the side that's facing the camera. If you see red, you gotta flip it. You gotta rotate it the other way or flip it. Um, so make sure that it's blue. That's very, very important. Okay, and then I wanna give it a new material. So new material and I'll call this brick. And then let's go to the shading tab. And uh, actually let's also scale it up. Just, ah, uh, oh, do we wanna scale it up? No, we'll bring it in, bring it in closer. There we go. So that it's just occupying the view uh, from the camera, like there, okay. Cool, so we need another texture of brick. Like you could make it, Look what any, and you could put wood there. You could put, you know, fool around, have some fun, right? But uh, but in our case, we're gonna make it look like brick. So we have brick here, and this is the free brick section. So I would suggest you use 
this guy right here. I'm actually gonna use version three of this, which is in the premium section. It's just a slightly later version of it, which looks slightly more realistic, but you will be totally fine just using this free version right here. Now, in terms of, um, oh, and look, it's just stalled the site, so it's not actually loading the, uh, there we go. Um, now, in terms of the maps that we need, um, we don't need the diffuse in this case. In fact, we don't need most of these. You, you could use like ambient occlusion if you wanted to for like a little bit of thing there or like displacement if you were doing like getting the camera really close to the brick, you would use something like that. Um, but in our case, the one map that we're gonna use is the normal map and that's all we're gonna use. So it's like faking bump. It's exactly like what we did for the condensation. So that's the only one of these that we're gonna use, the normal map. And then for the size of it, you could probably actually get away with 1K because it's like in the background and it's gonna be out of focus. So you can just download that. So once you've downloaded and unzipped that, what you're gonna do is bring up your little window here, find your folder, which you've unzipped, and then you're gonna take that normal map and drag it across into the shader, shader uh, window, node, node uh, setup. Gosh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? The node view, there's a word for it. Shader editor is what it's technically called, but who calls it that? Anyway, all right, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag that, not into the base color, because we're not driving the color at all, we're just gonna drive the bump, so into the normal input down there. All right, now when you do that, it'll become completely black, and that is because it's missing in between there a vector normal map node. So this is gonna convert that from a colored image into something that Blender can actually read. You can see it starts to look a little bit like a bump now, but as well as that, we also need to change the color space to non-color data, and because of that bug, it won't refresh it, so let me just do that, and there we go. So now it's actually treating this like a proper bump. And, uh, and it's all working fine, except it's rotated the wrong way. So I'm gonna rotate it along what axis? X axis by 90 degrees. Your axes could be different depending on which way the camera is facing. And I'm just gonna go underneath it. And uh, well, first of all, actually, let's move this light, move it to the, oh, I think I moved it the wrong way. Move it to the side a little bit, just so that I can see from the point of view down here. Um, I want this to look like paint, right? So I'm gonna use a roughness value that's a little bit sharper than what it was by default. Uh, so around about a 0.3 will look a little bit like uh, like paint. Not wet paint, obviously, but something that's, uh, uh, yeah, just a little bit not, not as dull as rubber or whatever. So cool. Now here's the cool thing. So because we've driven this and we're making it apply to the bump map, um, the base color is totally open here. And that's the color of it, like the, this paint here, even though the material that we downloaded was was white, right? It was, it was painted white. Because we're only using the bump map, this is wide open. So I could make this look like anything. So uh, it's, it's a cool thing, like you don't actually realize, but like when you go to find a material, if you're only using the bump map of something, you can make that color look like anything you want. So it looks like a pink purple uh, brick texture, right? Pink, pink brick wall for the back of our, uh, our cafe there. Um, just like that, pretty cool. Um, and that's basically that. The only other thing I'm gonna change is with my light here, um, we're just gonna do a very just, I mean, this is the most basic light setup that you'll probably ever do, but it's the simplest and sometimes the simplest is what works the nicest. One single light just to the side and I'm trying to think of like a cafe, right? So that's what I'm trying to emulate here. That's what this brick wall is doing in the background. That's what the countertop is, the coffee cup, everything I'm going for this scene of a cafe. So in a cafe, there's a, there's a window, right? And you've got natural light coming in through that window. So that's what this is here. Now the size of this, you can see as I increase or decrease that, this size here changes. In fact, let's go to layout mode. That would probably help. Uh, so it's a little bit bigger to see. Um, uh, let's go in here. Uh, yeah, so as I increase the size of this, you can see that it, it looks softer. It looks like overcast lighting. And that's why overcast lighting looks, um, it looks flat and uniform. It's because like the whole sky becomes its big giant light source, like a big diffuse light box. Um, because that, that, this size here is as if that is a big glowing ball in your scene right now. That's the size of it, right? Um, so soft lighting tends to actually look really good for, for food, depending on the type of food. But for this type of food, it, soft lighting will look good. However, it's so soft right now that it's lost direction. It's like part, you're, you're losing shadow in there, which is helping you to understand form. So actually you wanna find a value kind of like soft, but it's got a little bit of edge to it. So I'm gonna go with like a 0.8 value, right? 
In fact, in the lighting series, which I recommend you watch if you want to understand lighting more, um, I made that series because honestly, I think lighting is so important and uh, there was really no tutorials that I could find that was teaching lighting theory very well. So I made that whole series. It's on YouTube. I'll put a link up there wherever that little eye is, and you can click that and watch it. Maybe watch it after this series so that you've at least, you know, mentally signed off on something before you move on. But it's definitely a good one if you want to take the next step. Uh, cool. So that's it. Um, that's the, the lighting. That's the, uh, the brick. That's the countertop. And uh, the only other thing, by the way, I would check is just check that the, the bricks that are in your, uh, th this brick wall here, like the texture is important, like the scaling of things. And as it turns out, the scale, the size of these bricks is about the size of a coffee cup. So like one, the, the brick height. So actually I've just realized this brick here should be about double the size. So I'm gonna hit S and then type in the number two. So S and then two, that'll just scale it twice. And now it's roughly the right size. So now when I move that back, to about there, and this is like really subtle, right? It's it's pretty subtle, but it's just gonna help the scene feel a little bit more grounded, a little more real, because the, the texture is actually gonna match it in relation to the light and the, the shadows. It'll all just start to feel like an actual real scene. So uh, just something, uh, something minor, but can be important. All right, so uh, in the next part, we're gonna be adding in some final touches uh, to uh, add in all the correct settings and make this final image uh, look polished before we move on to the animation. So click there and I will see you in the next part.